I heard this little story of a pastor who had a son with long hair, a teenage son with very long hair, and uh, he told his son that, you know, I really um, want to reward you, you know, his son really wanted to borrow the car, the family car. And he said, you know, I want to, I want to loan you the car, but I just need you to do a few things for me. One, I need you to get your grades up. Okay, number two, I need you to read your Bible a little bit more. And number three, you need to get a haircut. So a couple months pass, and the teenage boy comes back to his dad and he says, Hey, Dad, how are my grades? He says, Great, you know, they've improved, great job, I'm really proud of you, son. And I noticed you've been reading your Bible regularly, that's awesome, but you still didn't get your hair cut. And he said, But you know what, Dad, I've been thinking about that. You know, there's guys in the Bible like Samson and Abraham, you know, and Jesus, they had really long hair. He goes, Yes, son, but they walked everywhere. <laughs> Teenagers can be a little unruly at times. They can be a challenge. I have a preteen and a teenager, and um, they are they are a joy though. When they're so independent, uh, trying to gain their independence, and um, they can go in a lot of different directions. You know, you probably remember your teenage years, some of you and thought, man, um, I wish I would have had a church that would have kind of embraced me and, and encouraged me to um, and grow in my faith. And so that's why I'm so blessed to have this church, because our teens um, have that opportunity. And here they are um, to be able to step on the center stage and bring to you a story um, that is one of the greatest love stories of all time, that is God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son to be a sacrificial lamb. And so the story of the lamb is going to be presented to you today by our youth. Um, and you're going to, we're going to need your participation in this. This is kind of a musical. Um, and it's basically our story. It's the story of the Bible, which Pastor Matt mentioned. It's a love story, really, right? Of God trying to gain our love from this beginning of time. But there's a lot of musical, a lot of songs. And I'm going to give you a, a little clue. There's a duet that's coming that's just going to touch your heart. It had me just shivers. It would be so beautiful. Um, and I just got to really thank the teens because we they work really hard, and they're really confident today. I think they're going to do an amazing job. I want to thank Miss Heather because she just does a, a, a great job with the teens and organizing everything. She does a wonderful job. Um, I want to uh, also thank our uh, wardrobe director back there, wherever she's at. Uh, Miss Linda, and we got a prop director, Aaron, up here. He's joining me from work, and he helped make the props. And Pastor Matt got the music composition. There was a lot of people involved with this, um, but just remember the theme of the story uh, when it unfolds. It's really for all of you. Um, so we're just going to bow our head with a quick prayer. Uh, dear Heavenly Father, we are so blessed, Lord, that uh, we got our teams involved with basically a, a Bible story, Lord, that points all to you. And, um, and I'm just so blessed to, to be at this church, to be able to serve you and your youth, Lord. And most of all, I'm uh, so thankful that 31 years ago, you put a wonderful woman in my life that really just led me in the right directions towards you, Lord. And uh, at the time, I had no clue, but now I do, Lord. And, you know the, the end game always. And as you watch this story, it's the same way, Lord. And we just thank you, and we want to glorify you today and this morning through our youth. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Did God really say you must not eat from any tree in the garden? We may eat fruit from the trees in the garden, but God did say, you must not eat fruit from the tree that is in the middle of the garden, and you must not touch it, or you will die. You will certainly, you will certainly not die, for God knows that when you eat from it, your eyes will be open and you will be like, like God, knowing good and evil. When the woman saw the fruit of the tree was good for food and pleasant to the eye, and also describable for gaining wisdom, she took some and ate it. She also gave some to her husband, who was with her at the time, and he ate it. And then their eyes, of both of them, were open, and they realized they were naked. So they sewed fig leaves together and made covering for themselves. Then the man and his wife hid by the sound of Lord God, and he walked through the garden of the cold dead, and they hid in the Lord 
God among the trees in the garden. Where are you? I heard you in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked, so I did. Who told you you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree that I commanded you not to eat from? The woman you put here with me, she gave me some fruit from the tree and I ate it. What is this you have done? The serpent deceived me and I ate. Because you have done this, cursed are you above all livestock and all wild animals. You will crawl on your belly and you will eat dust all the days of your life. And I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your offspring and hers. He will crush your head and you will strike his heel. Now we go to the year.
next turn to the prophet Isaiah of God. The prophet Isaiah lived during the reign of Ahaz and Hezekiah and was struck by the moral breakdown of the time. Isaiah reminded the people of the need to keep God's covenant if the Israelites were going to remain God's chosen people. But his ministry fell on deaf ears. Who has believed our message and to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? He grew up before him like a tender shoot and like a root out of dry ground. He had no beauty or majesty to attract us to him, nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by mankind, a man of suffering and familiar with pain. Like one from whom people hide their faces, he was despised. And we held him in low esteem. Surely he took up our pain and bore our suffering. Yet we consider him punished by God, stricken by him and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions, he was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him, and by his wounds we are healed. We all like sheep have gone astray, each of us has turned our own way. The Lord has laid on him the inequity of us all. He was oppressed and afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. He was led like a lamb to the slaughter. And as the sheep before its shearers is silent, so he did not open his mouth. By oppression and judgment he was taken away. Yet who of his generation protested, for he was cut off from the land of the living for the transgression of my people he was punished.
he had went to Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, six times and asked his, him to let his people go. And each time Pharaoh said no. The last plague was that all the firstborns of Egypt will die. And God told Moses to tell the leaders of Israel how to protect themselves. Go out once and select the animals for your families and slaughter the Passover lamb. Take a bunch of hyssop, dip it in the blood of the basin, and put some of the blood on top and on both sides of the door frame. None of you shall go out of the doors of your house until morning. When the Lord goes through the land to strike down the Egyptians, he will see the blood on top and on both sides of the door frame, and he will pass over that door. And he will not permit the destroyer to enter your house and strike you down. How will the 
this be since I am a virgin? May your word to me be fulfilled.
Maybe she's a child. Yes, you may follow the wall.
the salvation that blessed Christmas morn. There came a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify about the light so all might believe through him and be saved. I am not the Christ. What then? Are you Elijah? I am not. Are you the prophet? No. Who are you that we may give an answer to those who sent us? What do you say about yourself? I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Make straight the glory of the Lord. Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. the lamb. And then they would have to sacrifice the lamb. They would have to slaughter the lamb. 
And because it says clearly in Hebrews that there is no forgiveness of sin without the shedding of blood. That was God's plan. That a, that a lamb would be sacrificed so that man could be forgiven. And then you go all the way to the, the New Testament and you see this young boy walking across the stage at the end of our play. His name is Joshua. And I don't know if they picked him for that part on purpose, but the name Jesus is actually the Hebrew Yahshua. Joshua. That's his name. Did you guys plan that? Did you know that? <laughs> Joshua, playing the role of Jesus, fitting name, walked onto the stage of earth, and he lived a perfect life. Jesus lived a perfect life, something no one has ever been able to accomplish. And when he did live a perfect life, God looked at that and said, you know what? I can make you the sacrificial lamb for all people. For everyone whosoever would believe that you are my son, that you lived a perfect life, that, that you, and then what did Jesus do? He went to Calvary and he offered his life they crucified him. He shed his blood so that we could be forgiven. I heard a pastor tell a story. He was from Montana. And the story he tells is that he grew up near a sheep farm. And in the spring, when the baby lambs are born, oftentimes uh, the spring in Montana is not very kind. The weather is not as mild as it is here. And so many times, the baby lambs, some of them would die because of the weather. And sometimes even the mother sheep would die because of the weather. And you would think it would be as easy as just taking the, the baby lamb that survived and, and the mother lamb, that, the mother sheep that survived, and then just putting them together so that the baby lamb can drink the milk and survive and can live. But it turns out that sheep, mama sheeps, have a little test. And that little test is uh, a sniff test. And they will go up to the baby lamb, when the baby lamb is coming for the milk, and they will, it will sniff the baby. And if it doesn't smell like theirs, it will walk away. So what the farmers would do, what the sheep farmers would do, is they would take the lamb that died, the baby lamb that died, and they would take its hide and they would tie it to the other baby lamb, the living one. And so you got this funny, goofy-looking baby lamb with, you know, eight legs and two heads flopping all over the place. But the mother lamb, the mother sheep, would, would sniff it, smell its own, and allow the sheep to drink its milk. And it would survive. And the reason why that's a fitting story is because in Isaiah chapter 61, Isaiah prophesied, he said, I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall exult in my God, for he has clothed me with garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness. You see, in Revelation, we hear about a marriage supper between a bride and a groom. And the groom is Jesus Christ, and the bride is us, the church. And the only way that you can be in the marriage supper, the only way that you can be in heaven, is if you are clothed in the robe of righteousness. If you have Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. That's the only way. No one goes to the Father except through Jesus. That's what he said. And so this morning, I want to invite you, maybe you've been going to church for a while, maybe, maybe you've been uh, going, maybe this is your first time, second time, maybe you've never taken that next step where you just said, I want to be a Christian, I want to follow Jesus, I want to go to heaven. And maybe you've never heard it presented this way. You've never seen a play like this where you understood fully what God has done in his love for you. And today I want to give you that opportunity to make a decision to follow Jesus Christ, to, to become a Christian, 
to go to heaven. And if you want to do that, the Bible says it's very simple. God says, all you need to do is believe in my son. And, 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 and pray to God and say, you know what? I believe Jesus Christ is the son of God. I believe he died a sacrificial death for me. I believe he is the lamb of God. And I want to go to heaven and I want to spend eternity with God. And if you want that in your life, you need to make that decision now. Don't wait. Make it today. And so I want to give you an opportunity to do that. With, with everybody closing your eyes and bowing your head, if you want to go to heaven, if you want to have the robe of righteousness, Jesus Christ, then you can just pray this prayer. Just keep your eyes closed, your head down, and just pray quietly when I pray. Dear God, thank you for sending your son Jesus Christ. Thank you for loving me before I was even born. Thank you for making the sacrifice through your son Jesus. God, I believe. I believe in your son, Jesus. I want to be in heaven with you. I trust in you. I put all my faith in you. If you've prayed that prayer with all eyes closed, if you prayed that prayer for the very first time, if, you, if you're saying, I, I, I'm a Christian now, would you just raise your hand so I can just see? God knows. Amen. One, two, three, another, and another. What a blessing. You can put your hands down. I'm going to pray. Father in heaven, thank you so much for bringing us here today to worship you and to hear the story of your land. Thank you for loving us, redeeming us, through Jesus Christ. Father, I pray that this journey that we've begun will not end today, but it will continue while we live, while, while we are here on earth, that we can live for you, that we can stay connected to this church, that we can grow in our faith. Father, we know you have a plan for us. And it's a wonderful plan. I thank you that it begins with the story of your land. In Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, may the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you as you go in peace. You're dismissed. God bless you.